Hey, my name is Jordan. Uh, I'm from originally from San Francisco, California. Moved to Long Beach, California in 92. Um, right now you're in the Western Edition. Fillmore on Scott and Fulton. And to your left is, is, this is Alamo Square? Yes, it is. This is Alamo Park. It's a famous monument. Uh, a lot of tourists come here, as you can see. It didn't used to be like this, but uh, you know, it's a lot of people that just come to see million dollar houses, things like that. They got Full House, the TV show monument over there. So it's a lot going on. So what was it like when you was a kid over here? Um, you know, it was different. It was different. Uh, in the 80s, it was, uh, you know, drugs and violence was big over here. Not necessarily right here, but of course you have your major streets to visit Darrow. Um, you got the Tenderloin pretty close by. You got, uh, back then it was a lot of projects. How has the demographics changed here? Well, it's changed a lot because back in the, you know, like in the 50s and the 60s, there was a lot of, uh, you know, the black culture was really strong. African-American culture was really strong as far as, you know, just the whole jazz movement, things like that. And then eventually things, you know, money got higher for certain people, money got lower for other people, and then things start to change. This is a, a an example of full-scale gentrification. Oh, completely, completely. I mean, you can see, you know, taking a look at these houses back here, um, they're very, very expensive. Um, they've always been like that, you know. Me growing up in that, in that apartment there, you know, just looking at all these houses, being a kid in the 80s, and really just like, damn, this, this is really, you know, exclusive, expensive, you know, everything. And I, we didn't have it like that. So um, it was just something to, something to, you know, to be amazed by. Now, what was the, the, the gang scene like back then? Well, you know, out here there wasn't really gangs. Um, of course, they don't have Bloods and Crips. Um, it's more of, you know, a family kind of block kind of you know who you grew up with type of thing so me personally um, I never you know was forced to be in a gang or anything like that but they do have you know the, the cliques and the it's long time you know rivalries and different things that happen now this you know this area is really split up into different sections basically is what they call it so it's you know history similar to that but just not as a uh, you know not not as long-standing beef I guess you would say so even to this day, they're really not Bloods and Crips in San Francisco? No, no. The closest thing you have is probably the Hispanic gangs with the Norteños and the Serenos. Are you familiar with the, the gang injunctions that San Francisco had on a couple gangs a few years ago? Of course, and a lot of them were on the Western Edition uh, gangs. Like you know, what? Here. Uh, there was a few, Eddie Rock, KO. Eddie Rock is down this way, KO is up that way, or excuse me, down that way. Divisadero is right here. I know they had an injunction on them for a while. And, there's been a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot of people making the newspaper, you know what I mean? But I think uh, probably about a year or so ago, or pretty close to that, um, they started to eliminate a lot of that. So are those uh, neighborhoods still around or are they pretty, is the gentrification that an right. impact? It, it Talk about that. It definitely has an impact because you don't see as much, you know, open air, you know, violence, drug sales, things like that. Um, you know, they tore down a lot of the, the lower income housing the projects, you know, back in the 80s, like you had asked before, they, you know, they were they were up, they were active. There was, you know, that was the thing. And then now 90s, 2000s, what they do is, you know, they got rid of all that and then eventually they get bought out by the, you know, the different programs in the mayor's office and people, you know, actually voted on that. And uh, they just start building other housing. So then of course, all those people who are in that, in those situations in that, that area, they got to move them out further. Now, if you wanted to move back in your old building, Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Uh, would you be able to afford no, it? No, those are, I, I, I think my mom told me she paid uh, about, I think $900 a month for that. And that was a two bedroom, uh, one bath, nice view. You know what I mean? Now I think she told me it's like 3,000, 4,000 a month. No way. So you guys have fun with that, you know? <laughs> so yeah, no, I won't be able to move out here. I actually live in, you know, Richmond, which is uh, across in the East Bay now. So, but I do work in San Francisco, so I'm still around. I, I mean, I've even heard about people traveling, you know, from Sacramento and things like that. And that's a good, you know, 100 miles from here just because of that, because of the gentrification and you can't afford to live anywhere now. Some people drive, some people catch uh, like Amtrak. They got this thing called the commuter train. Uh, it's similar to BART out here. 
But people, uh, it's what, $45 a day that people catch that. Have you noticed an increase in homelessness? Um, I have. I've, you know, done different work in uh, different nonprofits, and, you know, uh, I have a city job now where I, um, we do research and things like that on trying to get people furniture and housing. And so I've definitely seen the numbers go up as far as people, uh, you know, more adults needing services. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about the Tenderloin. I always hear about that neighborhood. Oh, man. Um, you'll, you'll, I, you know, being in L.A. and seeing Skid Row and things like that, um, I definitely say the Tenderloin has got L.A. beat with that. Um, you'll see, you know, a lot of open air drug stuff. I, I tell people like this, um, if you have kids and you don't want them to do drugs and you don't want them to be homeless and, you know, doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing, hanging out in the streets, go to the Tenderloin. And you'll see everything you need to see want to see you don't want to see and you'll definitely have i think it gives people a lasting impression i know my mom did that so <laughs> so is that like the most active neighborhood in san francisco as far as like you know just the uh the, the, the tender you know means you know the soft part of the city that nobody wants to be in talk about you know but i recommend you check it out <laughs> now what about in terms of actual like violence homicide shootings um you really don't see you know too much of that i mean not you know of course it's still there's still things that happen um but of course you have fillmore of course you have hunter's point patrol hill sunnydale and uh you know of course that's still an occurrence but it's it's not as uh, it's not as active as it used to be before no you have to check the numbers though those three areas that you mentioned, Sunnydale, Potrero, Hunters, they all have projects still. Right, right. Correct. Have you heard of any plans where they're going to destroy them? Well, they did. They, uh, I think they've made a lot of changes to, uh, I know in the Bayview, uh, on the backside, closer to the water, I know that's prime uh, realty. So I know they've been, uh, they've been building things up back there to raise people's rent, what they call, uh, I guess, you know, how, it's according to how much you make. So it's like... Uh, 30% of your uh, your income is how they get people now with that. What they're what they're doing is they're kicking people, you know, they're kicking people to the curb to say, hey, if you guys want this money, we're gonna build this and you can sell it for this much and you know, that's that's the game right now. So at some point all And that's what happened to, you know, obviously the 49ers. That's my team. They used to play over there and they, they kicked them out. All right, talk about that. What was the stadium they played in and what happened? It was called Candlestick Park. Um, been there since what, the 60s? Um, my grandparents are longtime 49er fans. I've been going to games since the 80s. Got to see Jerry Rice, uh, Randy Moss, Terrell Owens, Joe Montana, all the greats. Um, you can kind of catch them. Yeah, no, I caught them at that time, but uh, gentrification took over and then they wanted to sell the stadium. And they wanted that area. They were talking about you know building a mall and doing all this kind of stuff for the neighborhood. And uh, that didn't happen. So then, um, what did they build? Uh, nothing. They tore the stadium down, and there's just open space there now. Where do they play now? Santa Clara, and that's what 40 miles from here. So how you gonna be the San Francisco 49ers and you play in Santa Clara? It's like, come on, dude. And how did the the city or the the fans feel? Oh, they were hot. Uh, you know, the mayor at that time, he he acted like he was all in on trying to help the city, and you know, you know how those backdoor last minute last minute deal goes you know they uh, set one of those up and uh, there was no mall built there was no nothing no you know nothing you know changed so people are very upset about that so it's a vacant little space now yeah I mean it's open area I think they're gonna build maybe some property or something back there but it's not what it's not what they said you know basically so it's just all lies right <laughs> and San Francisco they wanted to move they didn't like that area because it's right across the street from the projects did the owners of the 49ers have any say so they did, but they didn't. You know, why would you why would you push for something that can't make a lot of money? You know what I mean? Like, and they looked at it as, uh, you know, there's only eight what eight home games a year, so why would we spend all this money? And it's going to cost more money to build the area up versus just the stadium itself. So you have to look. They, what they did, with, you know, they looked at the big picture. So this is the stadium that created five championships of course <laughs> you're right don't uh, yeah and this is man. the stadium that uh montana and young oh yeah jerry rice all the greats man rice. i've seen all of them play i've seen all of them play but it's like man how could you guys leave no like, if you went to the old spot did they keep something there as a reminder no i have pictures and stuff on my phone where they were tearing everything down and you know what i mean i have 
you know, I have pictures and all that. But uh, I mean, if, maybe if you drive, they probably have a fence or something around it. I'm not sure what they got going on up there now. So, but yeah, a lot of people are pissed. So, but that's gentrification. That's another piece of it. Which of the uh, San Francisco public housing projects that existed when you was a kid and riding a bike all around here right. do not exist anymore? Well, a lot of them, uh, there's obviously some on Eddy Street that they tore down. Um, they tore down in the mid 90s and they used to be really big, eight, nine stories. Um, that was, those were called the uh, OC, Out of Control. Um, that was the name. It's Yorba Buena East, I think was the, the name, but the, the hood name was uh, OC and those were about eight or nine stories, filthy, you know what I mean? You know what happens in buildings like that. The elevators don't work, windows busted out, graffiti, people, you know, standing outside. Those don't even exist. I mean, they, they chopped them down and then they uh, they built them back into like, you know, affordable housing, but they're still, you know, we know what they are. So there's a lot, there's probably like two or three that are like that. I mean, I know there's a few in uh, Hunter's Point that have been chopped down. Um, and then they rebuild them back up to make them, you know, more presentable, more modern, and probably charge more. So what's the, the future for San Francisco, you think? I would say the future is, man, it's gonna get, it's gonna get lighter and lighter. <laughs> wider and wider, no. Um, I don't know, man, it's just, it depends on the job market. Depends on the job market. Maybe things will change, I don't know. Maybe if some of these tech companies start moving or, you know, more closer to like the Silicon Valley. Um, but for right now, I think things might just keep going up. Thanks for watching StreetGangs.com. Please like and share the video you just watched and leave a comment below to tell us what you think. You can also watch two of our previous episodes to the right. Please visit the link to our Patreon page and support our campaign. And don't forget to subscribe.